All right, welcome back to another episode of Two Plain Sports. Just the Brandon and Jose show today. Brum is still, you know, doing adult stuff, trying to grind out some work. But we'll have him back on Tuesday's live stream. Don't forget to check it out, turn on the notification bell. Uh, today, we're previewing the BYU game this week. Oklahoma improving 8-2 and two last weekend. BYU's 5-5 five and five going into the game. On OU is on the road going to Provo. Before we get into everything, as usual, make sure you like the video, share the channel, leave a comment, subscribe, helps us out, and then check out all the links in the description, everything about social media, follow us there, and buy a t-shirt. Help uh, help us out, support us a little bit if you can. Buy, check out our, our t-shirts, the long and short sleeve are available, um, and when we sell 100, we've got uh, the Sammy t-shirts, you're going to uh, donate a Brent Venable signed football to give away to one of our viewers so help us out all right so game this weekend week 11 i guess technically week 12 but the game 11 of the football season <clears throat> BYU's fighting for bowl eligibility in their first year in the Big 12 and Oklahoma's fighting for a chance to play in the Big 12 championship essentially you got to win out uh, if you're Oklahoma, take care of business, especially with how the rule changes um, or rule clarifications, as the Big Twelve like yeah, likes to call them, um, for the uh, for the Big Twelve championship. You know, we still need some help, but let's talk about the, the game a little bit. That's coming up this weekend. Um, as I said, BYU's five and five, kind of been up and down all season. Brandon, <clears throat> kick it over to you. What do you think about the the Sooner offense versus? the BYU defense and when what we should expect to see. Well, you know, BYU, if you just look at their last three games, they're on a, they're on a three game slide and the games were not particularly close. Um, actually, none of them are close. Texas gave it to them 35, six West Virginia, 37 to seven and Iowa state 45, 13. So they've not been even competitive. Um, in any of these games. So you, I mean, and, and everybody has scored 30 plus. So without even taking a dive at the box score, just looking at that with the naked eye, they've surrendered 35 points, probably on average over that span, um, close to 40. Um, they're not stopping a whole lot of teams right now. Oklahoma just came off of a 59 point performance against West Virginia, um, which did score 37 on, on BYU, but, um, yeah, just just looking at those last three games, the way their season has kind of gone, uh, the, in the way that Oklahoma played last Saturday, if they if they carry that over, you know, there's the, it's 10 a.m. their time, so there's a little bit of a body clock adjustment there that they have to be prepared for, things like that. But on paper, and, and the games never played on paper, but uh, Oklahoma should be able to pick right up where they left off. Uh, they've got a you got to think that they're going to score at least 30 just based off what this, what this uh, BYU team has been given up as of late here. Yeah. You would assume so that the Oklahoma offense, I think the only thing that will be interesting to see is how they do wake up for a road game. The last two road games, as we all know, have not been the best for the offense. Um, You know, they've made mistakes. They go on stretches where they're not putting points on the board, either field goal or touchdown. And you know you, you can't have that happen in a road environment. You got to capitalize on the mistakes that the opposing team makes, and make sure that you're getting to the quarterback at the end of the day, um, or get, giving Dylan Gabriel the, enough opportunities to get the ball down the field. Um, the weather it is going to be chilly. It's not going to be the best weather out in Provo, but you're going to have to figure it out. Jeff Lubby, I think his biggest opportunity here is going to be how that because they do have a good pass defense i mean they have 12 picks on the on the year their two starting corners are responsible for seven uh, both their starting corners and their starting safeties get their hand on the ball a lot so it's going to be tough to take shots down the field it's definitely going to be an opportunistic situation there when you do take those shots uh, there's going to be a lot of dinking and dumping and i would assume i would hope at least gavin sachuk is going to have a big game against against byu um that's their run defense is okay not great even their coach has has brought it up like the the biggest difference between where they were last year and where they are now competing in the big 12 is 
the size of the trenches. They're getting pushed around a little bit more than they're used to. They're still having to adjust to that. And they've only won two games in conference. And with the last time, the last win they had, both overall and in conference, was against Texas Tech. And it, it's been a month since that happened. So they're, they've are they got their work ahead of them. The Oklahoma offensive line looked much better last week. It's really just that road aspect that, that's kind of a thing to watch out for. Can they wake up? Like you mentioned, it is a 10 a.m. game. So how does that affect them? Elevation is significantly higher than Oklahoma. So are they high? You know, Brett Venables mentioned in his press conference. I'm sure Schmidt has addressed it, but hydration's super important. It's going to be hella dry up there. And I hope they have plenty of oxygen tanks because we're going to see a lot more rotation for everyone on the field, whatever position is. So maybe that some of that rotational stuff that was happening early on in the year with the offensive line might actually benefit them this week. It's interesting what you brought up with the pass defense, because as you were saying that, I just took a, a look at the box scores. And, and granted, the scores, as I mentioned, were ugly. I mean, they lost by 30 plus in all of these last three games. So take what I'm about to say with a little bit of a grain of salt, I think, but they held Malik Murphy to 170 yards passing. Um, West Virginia as a team was like 230. Um, but again, they played two quarterbacks. So I assume at some point Garrett Green was yanked from that game because they won 37 to 7. When they held Rocco Beck at Iowa State to about 205 yards. So I am going to agree with you on the pass defense thing without having watched the games at all because um, with the score so lopsided, who knows? They were just, you know, just run heavy. But the run defense for them uh, the last two weeks uh, looking just looking just at the West Virginia game and this uh, uh, Iowa state game, Iowa state ran for almost 250 yards on like 35 attempts, average almost seven yards a carry. West Virginia was well over 300 on the ground, averaging seven yards a carry. So this is going to be a big game for the offensive line. Push those. They should be able to push those boys around. They're clearly not stopping anybody right now. And uh, maybe the, the, the short pass game to, to establish the run should be a big day for, for Gavin, Tawi, whoever's going to go out there. Um, let's, let's look for the backs to, uh, to lead the way instead of Dylan with eight, with eight, with eight scores last week. Yeah. And even Dylan Gabriel might have a good game on the ground. That's he's true. been he's, very, he's very effective capable. when he runs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, weather's probably going to play into that. Being a little bit colder, trying to adjust to that, have their bodies warm up, Dylan's arm warm up a little bit. Um, you, you know, you got to take those shots to to open up that field. But the run game is going to be essential. Not just that, but time of possession. At the end of the day, whoever's going to win that and make the least mistakes, more than likely going to be the winner of this game. And for the most part, BYU keeps time of possession pretty well. I think they're averaging like twenty eight, almost twenty nine minutes per game with the ball so they while they do turn the ball over i mean it, they are high scoring games for the most part so the opposing team is giving them the ball back but they they are man they are able to manage longer drives which again puts the defense in a, in a tough spot both with the elevation change being colder they're going to be out there a lot <clears throat> i would, i mean the, the biggest question here for me and, and I guess let's flip it over to the defense now, the Oklahoma defense versus their offense is going to be <clears throat> how, because the BYU offense does well at running to the perimeter, the corner spot. They're going to be important when it comes to tackling, especially in the op- open field. Billy Bowman's going to be important as he is every week. Who's going to be out there? In a road game, you can only travel with so many guys, and that corner spot is already depleted with injuries. Is Gentry Williams healthy enough to come back? And play for you know, even 50% of the snaps. Macari Vickers. I mean, we're we're probably going to see quite a bit, quite a quite a bit of guys out there. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting uh, as far as who goes out there and plays corner. But you know, for the on the same token with 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 uh, Brigham Young, they seem to be able to defend the pass pretty well, but they can't pass on offense. And this is. They're without Keaton Slovis, or they have been, uh, you know, as of late, but they've just not passed the ball very well uh, with Red Slaff here. He's got about 100 yards a game uh, the last three weeks or so. That's an average. So, I mean, he's not not tearing it up. Uh, they, but their running game against Iowa State, they have almost 200 yards and five yards a carry. So, yeah, they are going to hit the outsides. I think it's going to be a lot more of contain on that. Let, let's, I think before it even gets to the corner level, it's going to be a big game for the edges, whether it's Rondo Bothrod, Trace Ford, Ethan Downs, PJ, whoever's out there on, on the D end or 
you know, Canick or somebody on the outside and then the linebackers, but it's going to be a big day for them at, to pursue the ball. Well, kind of try to shut that stuff down before it reaches the, uh, the corners and the, and the rest of the secondary. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned the quarterback's position for BYU. <clears throat> Their starting quarterback at the beginning of the year was Keaton Slovis. The weirdly enough, it's a thing now in college football. The journeyman of probably one of the first journeymen of, of this uh, era of college football. He started at USC, moved on to Pitt, and is now at BYU. Him and uh, JT Daniels. Kid's name. JT Daniels, those guys both you, are both former USC kids, yeah. Both, both, pretty sure they were even there together. They're doing college forever. Hopefully, they're yeah. they've got their doctorates at the end of this year. <laughs> Who knows? They might play one more year of football somehow. But yeah, Keaton hasn't been healthy. He's missed the last two games. Last time he played was against Texas. So it's been nearly a month or three weeks since he's played. Uh, their coach. Uh, did mention that he's been practicing, but isn't they're not naming a starting quarterback. So this is eerily similar similar to that Kansas game where Jalen Daniels was questionable all week, even went out there for warm-ups before the game, ended up being Bean. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a similar situation where they're probably not going to name a starting quarterback. Some rumors are going to come out before the game on Saturday saying it's probably going to be the backup uh, Retzlaff. And we probably see Keaton Slovis out there taking a couple warm up, uh, t- taking some warm up reps, and then just sitting on the sideline to kind of keep the the OU defensive staff guessing. I think BYU's chances are very slim. Uh, just no matter what, going into this game, just looking at what they've done uh, this season recently, everything. But if Keaton Slovis doesn't play, I think that very slim chance goes to absolutely zero. I, I think if, if BYU wants any chance to become eligible this weekend uh it, it's gonna have to be on the arm of Keaton Slovis because this this Jake Redslav kid um you know no offense to him he's not very good uh, he, he borderline I would say stinks he's got about 300 yards one touchdown so far in three games he's a little bit mobile I had about seven yards rushing last week but uh I agree with what you're saying it's gonna be a lot of smoke and mirrors all the way up this week uh with who's gonna play who's not gonna play I, can, I think you're right I think we can very well see Slovis warm up uh, just to try to throw it off, and even I mean, if he plays, he he won't. He probably won't be 100. percent He's he'll, he'll probably be rusty, having sat for the past three weeks. But if 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 the Cougars want any chance at all, uh, it's gonna have to be with Slovis because uh, they're just not getting it done with with with, with Red Slaff. And their fan base has to show up. Like that's probably gonna be a huge huge component in this because it is early. It is at at BYU. If they can become an element to the game early on it could be a tough one i i agree with you it doesn't seem like on paper this should be a close game and byu does have tough two games to end the season um and their hopes of becoming bowl eligible you know obviously oklahoma this week and then they end the season at stillwater so not easy matchups for them especially when their run defense hasn't been the best and I mean, you know, who, who knows? Maybe Oklahoma State's reverting back to what they were early on in the season and can't do anything on the offensive side of the ball. And Ollie Gordon, you know, what, what, what is it? Ollie Sanity or whatever is is done for the for the year. Um, he, he did put he, up a meet twenty five yards against the Knights. Yeah, not not great against U, UCF. So I mean, we'll 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 see what happens. BYU Kalani Satake uh, mentioned it in his, in his press conference. They're having a tough time playing complementary football just as a team. They're either their offense shows up a little bit and their defense gives up a big plays to the offense on the coming drive versus Iowa State. They started awful. They had, I think they're, so they started with a ball, quarterback threw a pick on the first or second play of the game. Iowa State scored a touchdown. And second, they didn't even get a second drive. On the Iowa State kickoff, they muffed the, they fumbled that, and they Iowa State got up to a 10-0 lead before they could even get the ball moving on the offensive side of the ball. So they're definitely prone to mistakes. The the change from what were they? They were independent, right? Before they moved to the Big 12 this last year. I thought I thought for some reason they were Mountain West for one point in their career. I'm not sure. I can't remember if they were independent or or in a conference. But either way, their their move now to the Big 12 year one clearly something that they're having to work 
on the depth, the the competitive depth as Brent Venables and this staff like to talk about is something that they're going to have to work on over the coming years. But he's a good coach. It, if at some point BYU decides to move on from him, he would be a really good guy to, to try to for, for Oklahoma to try to snag. It seems like he has similar values to Brent Venables. Um, but it is probably tough to recruit for BYU because they do have, and I didn't think about it before this week or ever really, but Satake mentioned in his press conference because he was asked about their their depth compared to you know the the opponents. He talked about the Power Five. It is very different coming from where they were to where what it is now. But he mentioned like he's confident with guys coming in through um, the high school recruiting level and then guys coming back from their mission trips. Didn't even consider that as a thing. So yeah. they're probably going to have some grown men playing out there for him that are freshmen probably 21 22 year old freshmen uh, <laughs> yeah. coming back from their mission trip so well i mean that you know that they've got a lot to do to grow into the big 12 but it should be a, a fun game for oklahoma fans to watch this weekend should be yeah real good one I, I mean i think he's saying it real nicely being the head coach saying they're just not playing very good complimentary football and, and they're not but i mean uh, that's putting it lightly i i you don't lose three straight games by 30 plus just by not playing great complimentary football. At some point you're just going out there and you, and you're getting your tails kicked and that's right now what's happening to, to BYU. Yeah. I think the Zach Wilson was a BYU quarterback, wasn't he? Yeah. I think both BYU and Zach Wilson wish he was back in college. That's probably (laughs) the best time of his career playing football and probably the best they've had for a while now. Yeah, they were rolling with him. And you were right. They were independent. They, uh, I, I Googled it. They, it looks like they left the uh, Mountain West in 2010 and were independent up until obviously joining the Big 12 here. Yeah. I mean, year one in the Big 12, year one being in any conference, let alone a Power 5 conference, isn't going to be friendly when you haven't had to compete against that level of football year, week in and week out. We'll see what happens to him. Um, Hopefully they find bowl eligibility in the last week of the season. That would be just the greatest. That would be a, that'd be a great scenario. That would be, yeah, that would be fantastic. They, I think they, I would root for them in whatever bowl game they got. For, for <laughs> oh yeah, if they, if they do that for it, yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, cougaring up in their bowl game. So let, let's, let's wrap it up for the video predictions and then a couple key players, one on each side of the ball for Oklahoma. Brandon? Yeah, so I think BYU just, they've, I mean, they've been getting boat raced. If, if they want to win this game, it's going to have to be, like you said, the home crowd is going to have to show up. The weather is going to have to cooperate with them, and maybe it, 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 it messes up Oklahoma. They're going to need the opposite of their start against Iowa State. They're going to need Oklahoma to try to have those blunders. It's going to have to be like a perfect storm, I think, for them to beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma's playing for something, you know, and, and so is BYU. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they really, really want to be bowl eligible, but – Oklahoma wants to get back to that Big 12 title game. They want to leave the conference that way. Uh, it, it's They need a little bit of help, but even if they win out, I think they're going to have a good chance for it. I, I just think we're going to be too much. I think Oklahoma's going to roll. It's let's be like a 41-10, to 10, something something like that. Offensively, it's, it's going to be the uh, the running backs, whoever that might be. I, I, so I'm, I'll probably lock in Gavin. It seems to be the Gavin Sawchuk show. He should have a huge game. Uh, let's – I think you know, I think he can hit 200 if you know everything goes to plan. So I'll go Gavin Sawchuk offensively, and let's go with Jaron Canick on defense. And so let's have a big game for Canick because they are going to stretch their perimeter on that defense. Let's uh, let's get after that and shut it down. You took mine for the defense. That I thought I was going to be sneaky in there and throwing Jaron's name since he's been uh, kind of forgotten about over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, he's a good one. Just to be a little bit different for my defensive key player. I'll go with Billy Bowman. I uh, think he's going to be important in, in the run game. I mean, Reggie Pearson is going to be doing what he does every every week, but with them probably not throwing the ball as much, he'll have a, he'll need to be down in the box maybe a little bit more than than normal so that he can help out with run support. On the offensive side, I'm going to go with Drake Stoops. I think Oklahoma's still going to pass the ball. You can't have a game like you did against Kansas where you try to rely a little bit too much and become predictable. And him being as important as he has been the last two weeks, I think he's going to have to maybe not have as big of a game statistically, but you know make those impact plays, convert, help convert on third downs, 
move the sticks. He's the guy. I think at this point he's shown he's the go-to guy. Um, so that's my my key players uh, score prediction. I'm. I also think it's going to be a blowout, given that they haven't. I don't think they've scored more than. Uh, what is it 14 in the last few 13. games? They haven't scored I would more say than 13. It's thir- yeah, it, it's been it's been a really really tough stretch for for BYU. Yeah, in conference their highest scoring game was against Cincinnati and that was two and a half months ago. That's tough. All right, I'm going to go with Oklahoma winning 52 and BYU being able to put up a couple touchdowns. 52 to 14. Both of us think yeah. they're going to cover. Should be a fun game. It'll be cool last road game for Oklahoma in the Big 12 and for the season. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good one for sure. It's the last year that OU fans will get to be able to go to Provo probably for potentially ever. Uh, you're going to be there. That's pretty awesome. So mm-hmm. uh, if, if you got nothing else, the end of the video is going to be obviously the, your score prediction because it's a preview video. But if anybody's been to Provo, drop the spots because like Jose will be there. You know, Maybe him and his dad can go check out some cool restaurant recommendations or whatever. Yeah. And if you know a bar or two in the area, you know, I, I had I did have to Google their <laughs> alcohol laws, not friendly, dry state, dry area. So if you know somewhere I could have a few beers after the game, I'd appreciate it. There it is. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As mentioned at the top of the video, like, subscribe, comment let us know what you think do the end of video challenge check out check out all the links in the description you can follow us on all social media check out our t-shirts if you don't want to buy one please share it at least maybe someone on your on your facebook or instagram or twitter whatever wants to check them out and, and purchase one thank you guys all for watching we will see you on tuesday